All right, let's see what we got. Sorry for the bad frame rate, not my control. No. The time is finally come. Don't tell me. No. Spell of Zaharas upon our enemies. Please tell me this is a joke. What were you thinking? Charging right into an enemy's trap. They did it. I too am trapped within this void. In time, our hearts and minds will cease to be. No. Prepared to die. <clears throat> I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. And yet, <sighs> there is no other choice. <sighs> you must join Smash. No. No. This is not happening. Brothers already. What in the world are you waiting for? You've got to be kidding me. I quit. I quit. Consumes even the darkness itself. See, too many swordsmen are there. Yeah. Thank you, you wield the sword as well. What will you do? He's finally acknowledging that. Huh. So that is how you plan to win the day. So be it. I reward your cleverness this time. Okay, a palette swap. You're kidding. How is this? I left recruits by left. What the hell is going on? Oh. Of anyone, you should be able to handle the hero's relics. With Aaron Fodge, strike with superior reach. Use Amir's overwhelming power. Unleash the blinding speed of Fail Not. Along with the sword of the creator, each weapon matches a direction. Your will and mine be now as one. To you, both sides of time are revealed. Through Smash, show the world. I quit. I'm sorry, but you've got to be kidding me. Yes, there you have it. Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses is joining the battle. Three Houses was released just last summer, so it's still very new. Even so, you'll soon be able to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This release is planned for January 28th. You'll have instant access if you have the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass. whoop de do. Available for purchase individually. In case you're not familiar with Fire Emblem or Three Houses, I'll explain a few things, so don't worry. First off, what is Fire Emblem? Can't believe this. It's really hard to pronounce in Japanese. The producer said it's okay if I just say Fire Emblem. 
But when writing it, if you don't write Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem police will come and get you, so please be careful. The series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. You might be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. Well, it's tactical in that it simulates combat. You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game, or in other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid and battle. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, sort of like in role-playing games. Plus, something made it stand out from other Nintendo products. Characters could permanently die. <laughs> That's pretty direct language, though, so perhaps we should just say they're sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> but really, if a character fell in battle, you'd lose that unit. They'd be gone, and you couldn't use them again. Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you, but a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be gone, never to be mentioned again. Scary. The game's stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. I still can't believe it. Another Fire Emblem character. Several characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. series, and six of the seven can use a counterattack. It's their down special. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First, turn-based nature? They attack, and you counter. Next comes your turn. Oh. Well, that's where that comes from. And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. Oh wow, there's that many? People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? Oh, wow, he read my mind. Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, but you don't include the Satellaview game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. Let's try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. I'll give it a try. There you go, 17. That's where that comes from. That's where the... How I was counting in a weird way, right? I was counting in binary. This is zero. Fold this here and you get one, and then you get two, then two plus one equals three, so this would be four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you get sixteen. Add one and you get seventeen. Awesome, isn't it? You can actually count up to thirty-one on one hand. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1023. If you've given up counting the knots in the tatami mat, you could always give it a go. Well then. <laughs> in Japanese, the male version of the main character is called Bereto and the female version is called Beresu, but in English, they share the same name, Byleth. Byleth becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. Once you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school life, and, well, you end up fighting the other houses. After a certain incident, five years pass, and you meet up with your grown-up students to battle against the other houses in their regions. It's a very sad game in which your former allies become enemies, turn hostile, and try to kill you. To understand the concept of Fire Emblem Three Houses, I played an early version of the game before its release. I've done oh, man. Thing before with he must have been a brand ambassador. For example, because I couldn't wait until launch to experience it or we'd have never made it in time. For that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days, ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time, 
I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. Why not? I did the same this time, but with there being three houses and multiple endings, it was really hard to get a feel for it. And of course, there weren't any walkthroughs I could reference. The game has multiple routes and the outcome of each is very different. Your experience will vary depending on the route you choose, and many of the characters you meet will adopt different roles in the story. I'll try to avoid spoilers when I'm talking about the fighter. I hope you'll understand. My friends have been harassing me to play this. I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogard showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. But this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Right now, it's actually November. What the? <laughs> Some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here I go. I still can't believe it. Fire Emblem. Again. Sadly, they're lacking in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Throws are not their strong point either. Their grab lacks range. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. The hero's relic they use changes depending on the direction you input with the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Byleth uses for upward inputs, the Sword of the Creator. The Sword of the Creator here is Byleth's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes the form of a whip. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, they'll whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. For their up air attack, they'll wave the whip sword overhead. The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. The up special move is really something. The sword extends like this, allowing you to do things like this. Okay, that's something. How I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition... Also, it's kind of like a recovery almost. This. That said, you'll launch opponents upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. Exceed that percentage, and you'll need to be careful. You may find it helpful to mid-air dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. So, that's the up special. Now, for the sideways inputs. This is Erdvar, the same name as the weapon from Celtic Mythology. First, we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have a long reach. Like so. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? If Byleth does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able to beat it. Next, the side smash attack. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it will be stronger. And if you've knocked an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. The shaft part is weaker, so it's not suited to close combat. It won't deal much damage, and it won't launch opponents far. That's why, as a rule, you want to hit with the blade part aimed upward. Or downward in this case. Next, the side special move. Byleth will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has excellent reach. 
For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little. Like this. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, so be careful. Use it in mid-air and you'll carve up a large area. Returning to the side air attacks from earlier, they have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. So this complements it well, although you'll be vulnerable when you land. Now for the downward inputs. For these, Byleth will use an axe called Emir. It's named after a weapon that appears in Ugaritic myth. First, the down air attack. It really is strong. You can try for a meteor effect with this attack. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. And for the down special, Byleth channels all their energy into a devastating strike. Wait, if that's the down B, how do you counter? But here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Which allows you to withstand an attack. Just so you know, if you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time, it plays out like this. That looked weird. But due to the super armor effect, you have the advantage. Unless you get grabs. Another notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breeze past platforms like this to reach a lower area. It won't let you jump, but you could use it as a surprise attack. Also, you can turn around during the move. The swing takes a while, so if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. Even though it can be hard to land a hit with this move, it can be really effective when used against a group of opponents. So I'm noticing like Ike's heaviness and strength. Like that's what I'm starting to notice, kind of similar to Ike. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series, because you'll just get loads of counters. Oh, yeah. It hits with that much power in a single attack. Counters can actually multiply the power of blocked attacks, and using easily anticipated attacks like this... So it's like... It's almost like a Doria, to be honest. Almost has the same launch power. The bow you use is called Feilna, which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral air attack. This attack is similar to a move of Pitts and other fighters like him. It lets you spin the weapon around. It's also easy to create certain combos with it. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. First, the biggest difference between this bow and Lynx is that once you enter the command, you can keep charging until it's ready. You can't release it partway through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels at high speed. It's also very powerful. That said, you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. You can also change direction while in the stance. It works up until this point, but if you keep holding the button, you'll unleash a powerful arrow that looks like a beam of light. Well then. You can perform this move by keeping the button held down. You charge up power like so, charge a bit more, and then fire. But again, you'll need to take care when using this move. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Not even with the shield button. In other words, you're committed to firing it. So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. Once you've entered the stance, 
you won't be able to do anything. Which means it's quite the risky attack to use against fighters who have a move with the reflector effect. But you could always just aim into the fray, as it is, after all, a long-range move, letting you deal a sudden blow to opponents. So you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. Byleth's final smash is called Progenitor God, Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, there's a move called Ruptured Heaven. This is an enhanced burst. That's just a mouthful of words. As you can see, you team up with the mysterious Selthus and launch an attack together. Selthus? So is she like the god? Now, let's talk about the color variations. It's set up so that the default and odd-numbered color variations are male, while the even-numbered ones are female. However, the third, fourth, and fifth colors are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Those huh. of you who played the original game will of course understand what I'm referring to. The sixth color is based on Sophis, who you just saw earlier. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on... based on something that occurs in the course of the original game's story. Didn't we see this variation in the final smash? Ereg Mach Monastery? Next, I'll introduce the stage. For this one, we of course tried to recreate the place where you spend most of the game. Gerig Mach Monastery. What kind of name is that? This is how Gerig Mach Monastery is laid out in the original game. From these, we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, and cathedral, all in one stage. So you're fighting in front of a church. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first area is the marketplace. I think this is where a lot of people come to do their shopping. Gee, I wonder why. The that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's house. Dimitri, Dedu, and Ingrid. Not Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Their names are a bit difficult to say. What? They're largely from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Since it's a kingdom, that means they have a monarchy. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite the difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. He's an unfortunate one, that one. There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things, but... You can attack it? Uh, here you can break them, you see. Oh. If you do break them, the stage will expand to the left and right. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. <laughs> and in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. You often pass through this area in Fire Emblem Three Houses, and you end up talking to him a lot. Moving through these areas is possible thanks to this mysterious platform. Just when it seems like you've come to a stop, you'll come crashing back down. Look at the, the platform looks awesome. And the guests in the reception hall are Edelgard, Dorothea, and Petra of the Black Eagles. Take note, it's not spelled Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire. And as such, they embrace their military might. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible to knock them down. However, Violet can't actually reach it, even though it's their stage. You can that, reach it with Why? That's... So, it's that's nice you weird. Your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. There we go. I made it. And you can knock it down. Also, you can break this table. Like so. Just like the sign that reads Fudin Kazan in the Suzaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. Next up, the bridge. The camera rotates 90 degrees, creating this long area. 
It's very wide indeed. It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer. I swear, a lot of this is kind of unoriginal. They belong to the Leicester Alliance. Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. The naming process must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. As for the bridge's design, it's just a long pathway, plain and simple. You can expect nothing happens at the edges of the screen. You could also say it's a place where the fail knot really shines, and in this sense, I think it suits the Golden Deer perfectly. I mean, it looks cool, but like, there's nothing that happens there. At least the Bridge of Elden had a bit of an explosion in the middle. The last area is the cathedral, only with some platforms you can pass through. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Seda, Flane, and Rhea. There's Seda, who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister, Flane. She seems to be under the protection of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. I feel that Flane might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. This is a simple area of the stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Wow, fighting at a church. Okay, today we'll have a tag team battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team pitted against Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. All right, here we go, Joker. Joker! What the? <laughs> and hero! Gee, we really made a lot, huh? Banjo! I mean, he picked up a power-up. You know what I'm doing. But basically, I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just the professor here. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hands on. It's not going to land that easily. Uh-oh, this is bad. Benegas. I better keep my distance. I'll use this chance to attack. Got him. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. Lots of explosives. Ouch. The perfect shield of that, huh? I wonder what the CPU difficulty is. If I do this, like this, or like so. No anti air, huh? There, the soccer ball connected. Good. There's mom. <laughs> There's mom. You're in a good spot, mom. Not mother brain, just mom. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir's there or not. I feel like the enemy might get this smash ball. See? They got it. But I mustn't give up. I can't waste the chance. This now that was lucky. Got it. Now, what are you charging up for? There's still more. Whack. Go on, you can take the hammer, but it's mine. Although, I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in this state. I hit him! I was trying to fight using Byleth's abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. 
Good game. I swear, Sakurai is just the most wholesome person. It can be fun to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. Oh boy, the music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being added. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. We're also adding in a new spirit board. It includes the house leaders among some of the other popular characters. Sothis is legend class. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series history. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand. But you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Ah, now I wanna know. Now for the Mii Fighter costumes. Please take uh, a look. Oh boy. A lot of Fire Emblem costumes, I'm guessing. What? Oh. I thought that was Assassin's Creed right there. <laughs> like if they just threw in an Assassin's Creed costume, oh my god, I would have freaked out. Okay, I guess Rabbids was kind of in inevitable after Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. More Mega Man. I mean, I guess that's cool, but like... Didn't we already have those costumes in the last game? Why? You know what? I think that's perfectly fitting for Cuphead. Good for him. Good for the developers. Wow, Cuphead. First Sans, now Cuphead. This time, we're releasing a Cuphead costume. And for those of you who purchased the Cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cagney Carnation. I hope you enjoy these as well. After purchasing a costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone has created a Mii Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. Oh, that's cool. And now, on to the amiibo. The color palette for Dark Samus looks pretty good, doesn't it? It does. Dark Samus and Richter are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. Oh, that's tomorrow. <gasps> oh! And now, with the addition of Violet, the fighter's pass is finally complete. The lineup was Joker, Hero, Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogard, and Violet. So what now? From more than 70 fighters, only 5 have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. I mean, you really did? You outdid yourself tenfold. 
When we add a new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look. What? Oh my god. What? Six more? Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. <laughs> For this reason, we will be releasing the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. It will be available for pre-purchase on the date shown, so please keep an eye out. Will we be done by the end of 2021? We intend to move ahead with development. Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now, and I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. I'm still buying it. Like last time, I'd be very grateful if, despite that, you would understand why and purchase it. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. He knows about us! <laughs> I still hope you'll look forward to it. We're also including a bonus with Fighters Pass Volume 2. Oh? It was a Rex costume, but this time, here's what we have. Oh my god. It's a Mii Fighter costume for Mii Sword Fighter, the ancient soldier gear from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. That does look pretty awesome. This will not be for sale individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. He do be looking kind of fresh though. What more could you have? My god! <laughs> it's reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Good job! Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. It seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if you really want to get into the weeds. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? But when it comes to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. I feel like it's become more than a fighting game. Some sort of celebration of gaming or something else entirely. I like that philosophy. Also, I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. The first fighters pass just wrapped up but it was decided that there would be more DLC. Which means, no breaks for me. I oh. have to keep working hard, so I hope you can continue to support us. Poor Sakurai. That's it. Thank you. He is, like, the best human being to ever exist. Well... Don't get me wrong, I'm excited that we're getting six more DLC fighters, but Fire Emblem, look, I get that it was a popular game. You know what? I'm not going to turn this into a rant. If you want to talk with me about it, I plan to live stream on Twitch later this week. So join me there. I will see you guys in the next one.